Tennessee. It's Alabama. That means for sure. It's football time. Touchdown, Big Orange. Blocked again. Cody again. Alabama wins. Score. What a drive by Tennessee. They go the other way to Humphrey. Touchdown, Alabama. The Home Depot SEC on CBS brings us to Bryant-Denny Stadium in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. And the matchup, the Volunteers of Tennessee and the Crimson Tide of Alabama. There won't be an empty seat today, about 102,000 on hand on a picture-perfect October day. And we welcome you, everybody, to Bryant-Denny. It is the third Saturday of October. I'm Brad Nessler. Nice to have you along with us. Third Saturday of October, the 100th meeting between these two teams. Great rivalry, one of the best. Great memories, great players, great games. But to have a rivalry, you actually have to have one team beat the other once in a while. There was an 11-game streak for Bear Bryant at one point. Peyton Manning came along, 10 out of 12. Tennessee won now. It's been 10 straight again for Alabama. And Gary, you and I have done a lot of rivalry games. We've done a lot of conference games. I don't know that we've ever had a bigger underdog than we do today. You know, Brad, for the Tennessee faithful, it's been a long season. I mean, the games were one thing. But I think this week, with this underdog, this has been tough to take. They're, you know, they measure themselves against Alabama, and this has been a long week. Is there a formula for them to stay close or maybe pull an upset? Well, they're going to have to do it with a young quarterback, Jerry Garitano. And good news, you're the starting quarterback. Bad news is your second game on the road is against Alabama. <laughs> He's got a lot of potential. He can do a lot of things, but against Alabama, it's going to be a challenge. Alabama's been number one since the season started. 7-0 and now, rolling towards Atlanta, it appears. They got great players on both sides of the and ball. And they mirror their great players. That's the good thing about them. Their great players are their leaders. Mika Fitzpatrick, he's the first guy out at practice. He's the consummate leader. He cherishes his teammates. He's the guy they all follow. And on offense, they got one just like him. Jalen Hurts, he's calm. His demeanor's always the same. And the offense kind of replicates the way he plays. So we get set for the 100th version of the Volunteers of Tennessee, the Crimson Tide of Alabama. Third week of Saturday, just about set to kick it off at Bryant Denny. SEC on CBS is sponsored by Napa, Sonic, State Farm, and by Bud Light. Alabama riding a 21 straight conference winning streak. Tennessee in desperate need of a win. Moments ago, head coach of the balls with Allie LaForce. Coach, it's been a tough couple of weeks. How have you and the team dealt with the negativity as you prepared to face the number one team in the country today? Well, again, it's all about working every single day, and this team has stayed committed and together, and we're getting better. And that's all you can do, block out the clutter, the distractions. We're disappointed right now with the way things are, but we get to control that. Jared Garantano made his first start last week. What improvements would you like to see from your quarterback as he makes start number two? Well, continuing to take care of the football is going to be big. And just overall command presence and then the rhythm and spacing of the throw game. Thank you, Coach. Good luck. Thank you. Jared Garantano is going to get his hands on the ball first because Alabama won the toss and deferred. Finally, we got a football feeling weather day instead of 90 with 100% humidity that we've had seemingly all season long. 81 sunny in Tuscaloosa. J.K. Scott will tee it up for the Tide. Ty Chandler will wait on the other end. 
And what yes, I'm, I'm, all -time series. I'm feeling a little bit like Garantano. He needs some help today. I'm fighting. And you are fighting it. I <laughs> appreciate you being there, partner. <laughs> I had it last week. I don't I know if it. I gave it to you. I but. don't know. Underway in Tuscaloosa. Chandler at the one yard line. Out across the 20. Fights his way out to about the 24. As we take a look at the Chick fil A starting lineups, starting with Garrett Garantano. As Allie just told you, making his second start. As Gary said, the good news is he's making a start. Bad news is he's doing it on the road. In Tuscaloosa. And I'll tell you, he's got a lot of tools. I mean, highly recruited quarterback, big, tall, good arm, but as you say, starting out. He's so new to it. Let's see how much he can improve from a week ago. Definitely adds a dimension in the run game. First down from the 24 with John Kelly flanking him in the gun. He looked to Kelly and takes off immediately. There's his first run, and it got him a yard. Raquan Davis made the tackle as we take a look at the rest of the offense for Tennessee. They've had some trouble that right tackle spot. They kicked Brett Kendrick out now to play right tackle and try to shore up that spot. They ran behind him, or at least Garantano did on the first play. And a play action, quick slant, and completes. Out to Brandon Johnson. He's going to bring up third down as you look at the tide defensively. Rashawn Evans. Maybe had his best game, he's had trouble with a groin injury, but he's getting better every week, and that makes the Alabama defense that much better. Third and four. Garantano, plenty of time, deep sideline, and overshot everybody. Intended for Josh Smith, and it's three and out for the balls. That's where you have to be smart throwing a football. Third and four, that's kind of a gamble play. Go to those slots. Go for the first down. Keep the football. So Trevor Daniel will come in to kick. Averaging over 48 a punt, which is second in the conference, third in the country, in fact. And this one goes out of bounds around the 32 or 3 yard line. So we'll get our first look. Chick-fil-A starting lineup, starting with the quarterback. And he's a good one, as we talked about in the open. Jalen Hurts, last year, one touchdown throwing, three on the ground, part of 132 yards rushing against the Volunteers You know what's amazing ago. about Jalen is, no matter what question you ask him, he says, we're trying to win the championship. <laughs> he's only lost one game, and that was in the championship. 20 and 1 as a starter. Very cool customer. Met with him yesterday for a long time. Yeah. Got good starting field position. Actually marked it around the 37 yard line. Quick throw, quick out, completes. Calvin Ridley swarmed under on the Tennessee sideline as we take a look at the rest of the offensive lineup for Alabama and for. Ridley is 34th catch that one a moment ago. The next closest is 11 catches and that's by Bo Scarborough. So the other wide receivers don't get quite as much work as Ridley does. Damian Harris a little hesitation in the hole and then bounces it out for a first down. Defensively for Tennessee. Corte Sapp's been in there for the injured Cortez McDowell all year long and probably at his best game in the loss to South Carolina last weekend. With all the injuries, does Tennessee have enough bodies? They played a lot of plays last week against South Carolina. Can they rotate enough up front? Harris in motion. Hertz looks that way and then comes back the other. Good and play. Ridley, about a two-yard game. Sean Schamberger making a start at corner. And he made the stop. Sure did. Two freshman started getting his start out there. Anticipates, beats the block, and gets there. Second down and eight. Jacobs and Harris both in the backfield with Hertz. And Harris.
Harris will follow Jacobs. Got it into Tennessee territory. So the first third down for Alabama coming up. Najee Harris checks into the tied backfield. Alabama 42% on their third down conversions this year. They've got to get this one to the 42 yard line. Might be a blitz coming off the corner from Tennessee. And they will bring it. Hurts has to hurry. What, what a catch, catch by wow. Ridley. Wow. That was Julio Jones and Amari Cooper like. Totally. Man to man coverage, work it. And he works it beautifully <laughs> that time. Boy, did he come back, get that ball and snaps it. First down at the 39. Crimson Tide's opening possession. Harris. Good run. 10 more, maybe 11. Well, the first time he touched it last week, he went 75 yards for a touchdown on the opening play. This one, he follows Jacobs again. Good blocking on the edge by Foster. And a first down run. And Sean Schammiger had a good play on the first one. And then he was the recipient of a big time play on the second one. They mark it at the 30, so it's about two feet shy of a first down. Damian Brandon right over him. Harris behind Hurts. He'll get the handle, he'll get the first down, spinning his way down around the 27. One more time, you're gonna get the starting lineup. Come up, make some plays. Oh, that hurts. <laughs> Harris has done that to a lot of people this year. Scarborough now in the backfield for Alabama. First down at the Tennessee 26. They fake it to Bo. Jalen Hurts with the throw out in the flat. Complete. Jacobs, the cutback. Jacobs inside the five. It's first and goal, Alabama. Ladies and gentlemen, that's their fourth string tailback. That's right. Coming across bootleg to the outside. Perfect throw. Watch his cut. Got it all the way to the five yard line before they can stop him. First and goal, Alabama on their opening drive. They've mixed it. Four runs, four passes. Here's run number five. Scarborough down to around the two. So we take a look at the Verizon red zone for Alabama this season. 37 trips. Third most in college football. And this time on their opening march, looking for a touchdown from the two-yard line. And as defensive coordinator Bob Shoup said, against Alabama with Jalen Hurts, they're always in the Wildcat. Exactly. He's there with Scarborough. He's going to throw for it. Fade to the corner. Off the fingertips of Sims, incomplete. He's looking for a flag and doesn't get one. Rashawn Golden. On the coverage. Got kind of hooked a little bit on the play. See right there, a little bit oh, of a yeah. grab. I think Cam had a uh, complaint there. Yeah, for Sean Golden, just a little hook. Third and goal at the two. Jalen Hurts, that extra running back you can't account for if you're a defense. But this is Scarborough. And he's Stop. close. Yes. Not in, though. Fourth down. But Thule made this tackle. Here saving comes, a touchdown. Here comes the big guys. That means the elephant package coming in. Duran Payne, defensive lineman, all 309 pounds of him, will be one of the lead blockers. They're perfect this year on fourth down. If they stay perfect, it'll be a touchdown. Scarborough airborne touchdown.
touchdown. Bo Scarborough's fifth scoring run of the year. 12 plays doing almost anything they want. And at the end, all power. Andy Pavanastis in for the point after. Perfect on 36 extra points this year so far. They got a whistle before the kick. Before the snap, false start, number 92, offense, five yard penalty, still a try. So Williams was in there blocking on the touchdown with a false start. So we'll have this extra point coming from the 16 yard line. been perfect so the opening drive of the ball game for the Alabama offense goes 63 yards in 12 plays that was the capper Bo Scarborough over the top and the tide leads seven of it I think anybody that pays any attention to college football knows that Bush Jones is on one of the hottest seats in college football and kind of like the Dow Jones they've got the Butch Jones up and down hired back in 12 the 24th Tennessee head coach things were going good and then it fell off a little bit missed three straight bowls then it was coming back won a bowl game in 2014 back down lost three games after having double digit leads in 15 and then the high spot high spot 5 and 0 start with Josh Dobbs and company and dropped out of the top 25 three game losing streak in Great win the final moments in overtime against Georgia Tech, but then the final play, Florida beats them. Had a couple of games go down to the last play, and which talking with you and Allie and I the other day said, hey, we're two plays away from being five and one, but they could have been two plays right. away from being one and five. And, and, and since that five and oh mark, he's two and seven in the SEC. Ty Chandler, will he bring this one out? Thought about it. He'll take a knee and they'll bring it out to the 25. So Garantano with his second series upcoming. Remind to get the CBS Sports app for the fastest scores and inside access to Tennessee, Alabama, all your favorite teams. Download the CBS Sports app today. First decision of the game for Tennessee. They went hurry up last time when they were there. But Alabama just ran 12 plays. You have to manage your offense, or this could get way out of whack with plays. Do you want to go fast against Alabama? Empty backfield for Garantano. If you go fast, you better make first downs. Blitz coming. Garantano hangs in, throws a strike to his tight end, first down. Great Good throw and catch. Good protection, too. Alabama comes off the edge. Picked up well. Ethan Wolf on the receiving end. Look at that. Great protection and good throw. He shows signs, doesn't he? Yes. He, oh, he's got a great skill set. Good competitor. But obviously a step at a time. John Kelly with him in the Tennessee backfield on a first down. Jordan whips around and going to throw it out to him in the flat. Nice catch, fingertip catch, and a good looking play. So Tennessee's got something working. And that's one of the things Tennessee has to do is get the ball to different players. John Kelly has gotten the ball way too much in this offense. They've got to get other people involved, and they are so far. Tim Jordan, good pickup. Got eight, second down and two upcoming. The give is to Kelly. Got hit at the line, bounced off. I think he might have gotten the first down with the spot they gave him. The linesman's got his foot right at our yellow marker. And they're mixing it up a little bit. Officials get in there. 
needs about a yard and a half. I think he might have squared it really, really close. I think he got it. I think they gave him a good spot. Yeah. Another look. Got knocked backwards, but his forward progress has given him a first down. Two tight end set. Ty Chandler, the freshman, in at the tailback spot. Baron under center this time. And it's going to be a flea flicker. Alabama knew it was coming, but Garantano got away. He got back to the line of scrimmage and got whacked there. Ness, Alabama knew it was coming, but Tennessee didn't. <laughs> their receivers never went out on the play. So they got their wires crossed. There's the kickback, and Garantano said, where is everybody? The receivers for Tennessee never went out. Watch. They were standing around. Yep. It brings up second down at 10. High snap handled. Chandler. Whoa. Hello. Rashawn Evans, our highlighted guy in the Alabama defense. And he's getting healthier and more dynamic all the time. Plays linebacker against regular deep offense. And then a nickel, he's an edge rusher. Last week he had six tackles, two sacks, and that was a collision right there. And now he'll be right here, coming off the edge. Everybody looks to the Tennessee sideline on a third down at 11. And the crowd into it for the tie defense. As Gary said, there comes Evans and company. Garantano just takes off. Fighting his way short of the first down, but he got it to the 45-yard line. We got an Alabama guy down, and it was Rashawn Evans. It is. Let's see what happened here. Right there. He came on the blitz, like yep. you said. John Kelly's helmet kind of collided just, with it. Yeah, it was inadvertent, basically, right? Yeah, I don't even think Kelly was trying to block him. They just ran into each other. We'll check on Rashawn when we come back. 5.08, first quarter. Jalen Hurts in the huddle there. He's going to have to set up his offense around the one-yard line as we do Project Smarter presented by Home Depot. I'm going to handle this one, Gary. Thanks, babe. Save your voice doing Project Smarter. I'll tell you how you do it. You get a guy that kind of likes Vince Young watching him when he's growing up, and then he starts playing like Vince Young. There's Vince Young to win a national title over USC. There's Jalen Hurts doing what Jalen Hurts does so well. Not, and like only, you, not only a great athlete, but a smart player. And like you said, he kind of glides yeah. like Vince, you know? I said to him the other day, I said, it's like you're on a hoverboard. And he yeah. said, it's just because I'm a long, long strider. strider. You know, when your offense is going well like this, you're happy to get the ball back here on the two. You go, good. we got a chance to get 98 yards. <laughs> and use up the rest of the yes. quarter. Tennessee wants to make this a game. They need to get a stop. Jalen. About three yards in his own end zone. Blitz may be coming off the corner. Now they back out of it. He throws calmly to Ridley, who not, mishandled it. Not very accurately, though. Yeah, Ridley says, get it to my other shoulder. Same play that happened before. This time it was inside. And it was canted on the coverage. So second down to 10. Now the first quarter's been pretty good to Alabama. And so is the second quarter for that matter. Big opportunity for Tennessee here now. Second and long. Harris trying to fight his way through out to the 10. Maybe a first down. What a run. Battling it in there with Bradley Bozeman. And Jonah Williams leading the way. Up front. Oh, just mashing him up front and physical run that time. Sapp is holding on for dear life that time. Maybe you told us yesterday finishing plays or something he wanted to improve on. He finished that one out to the 13 yard line. Hurts quick throw this time. It's on target to Ridley and he's close to a first down. Damian Harris thinks he wanted to improve on starting right after the loss to Clemson last year. He was telling us about this yesterday. 
He wanted to lose weight, which he got from about 232 down to about 209 Amazing. right now. Amazing. Finishing runs, not getting caught from behind. He hasn't had anybody catch him this year. One cut runs, pass protection. He's done it all. Second and a yard. Ridley in motion now sets up on the left. It's Harris for the first down run. Uh, across the 25. And it was interesting when we visited with him. He said Bo Scarborough's success really helped him. Yeah. He said he was on fire. I needed to up my game. Bo, of course, had a great game going in the matchup with Clemson before getting hurt in the third quarter of the national championship game. People forget that Damian had over 1,000 yards yes. rushing last year. Yeah. It's not like he had a bad season. And I think Damian was disappointed that they didn't come to him after Bo was hurt. That's when he said, I'm going to get better. He's got a breather, and Bo's in there right now behind Hurts. First down for the 25. Remember, Alabama started this at their own two-yard line. It is Scarborough. Nice cutback. Almost got face masked, it looked like, as he got it out to the 30-yard line. Ran that play right into a corner blitz and still made it go. Such a wealth of running backs on this Alabama team. Coming right from inside, see it, corner blitz, blocked by Jacobs well, makes a positive play. That's about the third time Jacobs has thrown a wicked block here in the first quarter. And he's supposed to be the finesse guy. Right. <laughs> we were saying the other day at practice, even the small guys on Alabama oh, are big. big. Jeez, amazing. Second and five, Scarborough again. Nice stop and there. And he got stood up by Batuli. Nice form tackle by Batuli as we check in with Alec. Hey guys, Rashawn Evans is out of the tent. He's back on the bench. He's cleared to play. They're telling me it's an upper body injury, but no specifics just yet, but he is good to go. That's good news what for the Alabama defense. That's specific for Alabama. Upper, upper body. body. That's close. It's yes. the best you're going to get. <laughs> Third down. Alabama needs to get it to the 35. When will Jalen Hurts carry the football? He might carry it right here. He but had, he's out of bounds. Yeah, he had to the wide receivers that they were blocking for a bootleg, and it was covered well by Tennessee. Let's get an update. Adam Zucker in New York. Zuck. All right, Ness, one loss, Virginia Tech. Back from a bye week, home against North Carolina. The defense getting after Chaz Surratt, causing the fumble, or influencing the fumble. Big Ricky Walker with the big scoop. Hokies score first, 7-0. Back to you guys. Yeah, here we got a fourth down and a punt. J.K. Scott in for the first time today. Yeah, interesting call on third down. A play action bootleg pass on third and, you know, medium or long. And the pass was never made as Hurts was run out of bounds. Marquez Callaway back to for Tennessee. Ooh, ooh, nice kick. Callaway's got to call fair catch and shags it down at about the 21 yard line. So Tennessee's defense did their job, gave up a little ground. Alabama moved it from their own two, but forced to kick. Tennessee with the football back on offense when we come back to Bryant Denny in a moment. Tomorrow, doubleheader day. First, the Panthers take out the Bears. Then Jim Tony and Tracy will have the Bengals and the Steelers getting together. Day kicks off with JB, Phil, Coach, Nate, and Boomer on the NFL Today, presented by Southwest Airlines. Noon Eastern on CBS. Here, a minute 11 remaining in the quarter. Tennessee on their last possession. Gary looked like they had a little trick play going, didn't work. If you talk to Tennessee's people all week, they said, we can't beat ourselves. Big flea flicker called right here. Watch this. The right hand doesn't know what the left hand <laughs> is doing. Marquez Calloway and Josh Palmer just sort of standing there, getting ready to run block. That's not how those work. John Kelly. Wrapped up for a loss of a yard. I want to talk about Jerry Garitano so far. A couple series. He, he, he looks okay, right? Yeah. I mean, he has to be careful, though. <clears throat> His backup quarterback is Nick Dormady. So he can't take <clears throat> a lot of hits. Dormady, of course, started the first five games of the year. Garitano, this, if you missed it, his second start. And in a tough place to play quarterback on the road at Alabama. Second down at 11. High snap again, but he throws off play action, and Wolf gets buried 
as soon as he made the catch by Levi Wallace. Third down and long. That's the problem. You have to open it up against Alabama to make it work. If you're too careful, they defend it. Too safe. Wolf had a first down catch earlier, but that was on a slant. He actually lost a yard on that one. And it brings up third down and 12. This is where you got to be very careful, but they'll wait until they get to the other end to be careful because we played a quarter. And Alabama, the number one team in the country at the end of one, leads it 7-0. We'll return to Tuscaloosa after this message and a word from your local station. We played a quarter of the third Saturday of October, the 100th matchup between Tennessee and Alabama. Tied with a 7 0 lead, Tennessee with a third and 12 from their own 18 yard line. Garantano has plenty of time in the pocket, and now he's going to take off and run with it. Gets collared at about the 25, is going to be short of the first down. As we welcome you back to Bryant Downey Stadium. Brad Nestler, Gary Danielson, Ali LaForce. Nice tea you got working there. It's kind of like Tennessee, <laughs> sort of like your voice so far. Some things have worked and sometimes it doesn't. Well, that's 11 quarters <laughs> now and yeah. for Tennessee and, and one quarter for me, right? Right. 11 quarters without a touchdown. Uh, you know, the Tennessee defense has stepped up for one drive. Butch made a good decision to punt the ball on fourth and short. Game seven, nothing. Keep playing. Keep playing. See if the tide will shift the other way and the pressure would go on Alabama. Tennessee to punt it away. And this one again goes out of bounds. Not a good kick. Second time. Kind of a shank job by Daniel. TV's best night of comedy begins with the Big Bang Theory, followed by nine JKL. Kevin can wait, and me, myself, and I. It all starts Monday at 8, 7 Central. Only CBS. Great lineup. Here they're going to line it up. Where did they spot that thing? A 25 yard kick. They put it right at midfield. So a guy that's been having a tremendous season putting the football has had a couple of bad ones in a row. Yeah, and Tennessee needs to be very careful now for a deep ball. They've thrown all those hitches. Sooner or later, you know what they're going to go hitch and go or just try to go play action and go. You saw Jalen had final word with Brian Dable, the offensive coordinator on the sideline. And there's the football with the tip right at midfield. Hertz has improved his accuracy tremendously from a year ago, say the coaches. Only had one that was a little bit off so far today. Scarborough in the backfield with him. Calvin Ridley in a little motion. Here's the play action. He wanted the long ball, like Gary said. Going deep and caught. No, nope, nice broken defense. up. Broken up by Golden. Golden might be their best player on defense. And he makes a beautiful play there. They wanted to go to Ridley on the play, but it was, at least in Jalen Hurts' decision, not there. Watch, Rid watch Ridley. He's going to go deep, and it's covered. I thought he should have let it go. Just throw it. With a guy like Ridley, get it out in front yep. of him and see if he can run under it. Instead, he goes to Sims, and then Sims shaking up at the end of that play as his head hit the turf. But Rashad Golden stayed with the play, finished the play, and knocked it out. Cam Sims came off under his own power. Senior out of Monroe, Louisiana. Maybe their best blocker on the perimeter, but was shaken up on that last play, going up for that ball. And his head hit the turf as he landed. So Jerry Judy, the freshman, comes in to take his spot on second and ten for the tied offense at midfield. Tennessee needs to be ready for the run now. Alabama will try to get four or five yards and make it third and medium. Scarborough, good defense. Right at the line of scrimmage, Corte Sapp was the first guy there, and he got help from his friends. The Tennessee defense is gaining a little momentum, a little belief that they can stop this offense. Sapp goes one way and then comes back away. The whole thing was well defended up front by that Tennessee defensive line. 
Tennessee's pass defense is one of the best in the country. The problem is their rush defense gives up about 243 yards a game. So it's kind of skewed in that statistic. But here they got a third First and charge timeout, Tennessee. And they'll take a timeout right here as Jalen Hurts will trot to the sideline for Alabama. Have an opportunity to talk things over. So will the defense with Butch Jones. 7 0 tied. Seahawks action continues Sunday starting at 1.25 p.m. on Cairo 7. Are more stars in the series premiere of SWAT Thursday, November 2nd, only CBS. Ali, got an update on Cam Sims for us? I do. Sims came out of the tank. He didn't appear to be in any pain at all. The team told me that he also is dealing with an upper body injury, but is cleared to enter the game. And again, Sims was going on a jump ball, that pass from Jalen Hurts as he went airborne and came down banged his head on the turf and we assume that's the part of the upper body that's shaken up. Tennessee had to take a timeout. They only had 10 men on the field on the third and on long. So they've done a good job to this point. Didn't give up that pass to Sims and then stuffed the run. Now we'll see what Alabama does on third and 10. One of the things they said is a problem is only rushing four against Jalen Hurts. He can scramble out of it. Bob Shute told me he was rushed more than four in these situations. Hurts. There it is. They there he goes. Four. And Hurts is going to make him pay if he gets a block, yeah. but he doesn't. Nice Good job defense. by Golden. Yep. Ball came out late. It's exactly what Tennessee was worried about. When you rush four, which they did that time, they were nervous about Jalen Hurts seeing the four man rush, feeling the lanes, and beating them with the quarterback run out of the pass play. There's a great look at what he saw and then he tried to get away around the umpire and he was stood up by number seven who's made some good plays here this first half. Yeah, and Vickers retraced his steps and got back there on the tackle too. defensive end. Marquez Callaway waits back around the 10 yard line of the J.K. Scott punt. And a whistle before the snap. Delay a game. Mark Curls, our referee. Not sure who this is on. Maybe Butch is going to decline it if it's on Alabama. Delay a game. Offense. Five yard penalty. Still fourth down. All right. I'd be surprised if he did because then running into the punter would be a first down. I'd take it the penalty and just make sure that that didn't happen. That's exactly what he did. So Scott will let this one fly from around the 40. Callaway will call fair catch and take it at the 15 yard line. So Tennessee a big underdog but only down seven with 12 and a half to go in the first half. Time for our Trivia question. It is, which head coach has the most wins in this series? There have been some really good coaches. We know that Nick's some, done a pretty good job some in this names, series. Some other names. We'll get back to you on that one in a few minutes. So one of the problems with Tennessee, perhaps, is they've used John Kelly too much. He's had 137 touches coming into this game. The next highest touches, just touching the ball, was 30 by Chandler. But... Do they need Kelly a little bit? He's their most gifted running back. Give him the ball. Here he comes. Down he goes after a two and a half, three yard gain. Raquan Davis, one of the first guys there, and then that swarming tied defense helped him out. It's a great opportunity for Kelly to put something on tape against this elite Alabama defense. If you can run it against these guys, all the NFL scouts will notice. He only got three carries a year ago, but of course it was a whole different backfield for Tennessee. Garantano with a second down and eight. Four receiver group in there for him. Callaway will come in motion toward the ball. And he's going to whip it out to him. That's a lateral. And Callaway, pretty good gain out of it. Flag, I think he got face masked. Maybe. If so, it's going to be a first down for Tennessee. And again, another way of trying to get the ball to different players on this offense. Callaway is 
for the year has had only receptions. Personal foul, face mask, number six, defense. 15 yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. We saw a great shot of it. The penalty in the first down now for Tennessee. Just think about it. Kellery has only touched the ball 12 times this year, all on pass receptions. Can they find some other ways to get him the ball? Jet sweeps, a lateral play like that right there. Expand this offense. Galloway split out to the left. And a first down, empty backfield here for Garantano. Chandler in motion, they fake it to him. Garantano's gonna be racked up in the backfield. Alabama saw that one coming all the way. And Evans and Davis make the hit. So you wanna play quarterback in the SEC against <laughs> Alabama? Fake the jet sweep and go, uh-oh. Actually, Josh Frazier, the first guy to meet him. So now in a bad spot, second down at 14. And remember, South Carolina, we could go ahead seven sacks against this Tennessee team. They'll play it safe. Got back to the line of scrimmage, maybe Chandler, and that's third and long. I don't have a problem with this. Seven nothing football game. You do not need to make a big mistake on this side of the field. Alabama feeds off of turnovers. They've had at least one in 34 straight games. Turnover, that is. And they're plus 11 in the turnover margin. Third and 14. Garantano pressured. In trouble. Got away from it momentarily. And then took a big hit. And that's what I'm talking about. Those hits over the course of the game will add up. Jeremy Prude, defensive coordinator, saying to us yesterday, it's kind of like a boxing match. If we just keep hitting him yep. by the fourth quarter, he's going to get sick of getting hit. It's called to affect the quarterback. And modern football, you're trying to affect the quarterback on runs or passes. Hit him no matter what. Trevor Daniels said, Kind of a rocky first half, punting the football. Let's see how he does here. Much better. Fielded at the 15 by Marks. And down he goes right there. Good coverage. Tennessee trailing only seven on the road in Tuscaloosa. There have been bigger underdogs that have pulled off upsets in the last 10 years. If you take a look, Howard this year, in fact, over UNLV. And right now, Tennessee, a big underdog, but they've been playing tough. I think they have, and that's really the key to playing Alabama. You have to match their physical play. You know, strategy is one thing, but if you can't match them physically, you have no chance. And Tennessee's doing that. So now Alabama will work from the 15-yard line. Just wonder when we're going to see that power running a game again. They've been throwing a lot on first down, the hitches. Are they going to go back and try to feed the ball to those running backs? That's been their bread and butter this year. Averaging over 300 yards a game, which is tops in the SEC and seventh in the country. Or perhaps unleash Hurts for a design run pretty soon as well. He hasn't run by design so far today. Amy and Harris, and again, well. Tennessee yep. does a nice job. Yep. Stands him up at the line of scrimmage. Let's check in with Allie. Nick Saban worked his way into the offensive huddle, and he just screamed, let's go. Also, the players, they were really satisfied to start this game, but on the sideline, they started to get pretty antsy, looking at each other, going, let's get this party started. Right. The longer Tennessee stays in, the crowd gets a little antsy. Yeah. The Bama players start looking at each other like, what's the deal? What's the deal? There's a good look. Everybody sort of has their hands on their chin in the crowd right now going, what's up? Second and nine is what's up. Ooh, Hurts. Dangerous. Incomplete. Boy, if Galton played that just a little better, it might have been a pick six. He tried to work through it. And I know what you're saying, but he played it pretty darn well, to tell you the truth. Watch Galton. Takes on the block, gets through it, and makes the play. 
Galden has been the playmaker on this Tennessee team. Has he ever? Man. Had 10 tackles a week ago against South Carolina. They held, so, you know, they held South Carolina at 129 yards passing. That 10 tackles was his career yeah. high, so he's picking up right where he left off last week. Another third and long situation now for Alabama, third give and nine. The, give him the same look with the linebackers in the middle. They come out of it again. Jalen fires down the middle, and it is caught twice by Jerry Judy. Wow, what a catch. That ball was not thrown in front of him. Judy had to stop a true freshman and make that catch. Out of Deerfield Beach, Florida. And when I said he caught it twice, it's because he bobbled it and then brought it in back to the running game. Or Harris there we kept go. his balance. Man. He's got speed. He's got power. He's got balance. And, oh. and he's got a lot of desire. You know, I mean, he wants to put and show everyone that he's a featured back as well. He's going to run right out of the stripe on his helmet there. <laughs> Look at that. Put the hand down so and get an extra four yards. 12 players on the field on the defense. Five-yard penalty from the previous spot. Still first down. And one of the reasons that happened, we're trying to show you a replay. Alabama realizes that Tennessee is changing their defensive personnel and snap it. Caught him with too many guys out there, so... Doesn't really seem fair that Alabama can go fast as well, does it? <laughs> first down and five as we approach eight minutes remaining in the half. Blitz coming off the corner, and it's knocked in the air, and it's Rashawn Golden again. Jeez, all over the football field. Came off the edge, and Hurts threw it right into his hands. Somebody asked me what players on Tennessee could start for Alabama, and I said, you know, I haven't studied it that much, but I know one for sure, Golden. He could play for anybody. Had his first career interception in the Florida game we did. And as Gary said, he's been every place so far defensively today for the balls. Second and five blitz from the other way. Harris straight up the middle. And it's going to bring up a third down. Well, you got to give it to Bobby Shoup. He's not laying back. They're doing run blitzes on almost every play. It's a moving target. And Alabama's not cleanly blocking it. Third down, it's short. Couple to go. Jalen Hurts numbers so far today. Damian Harris, this time he's got the first down. And it's going to be Golden that he takes for a ride, but another tackle by number seven. First down, Alabama. He just looks like a different guy. He's so confident. He's so determined, Harris is this year. You can tell he feels like the number one guy. Play fake, quick throw in the middle. Tight end's got it with both arms wrapped around it. As Hetches takes the Volunteers down. Uh, the volunteer defense, Elliot, is down inside the 35. Uh, and as O.J. Howard just called in and said, what is that? A tight end pop pass? <laughs> Damian Harris. Harris this time into the secondary Ooh, all the way to the flag. 20. Late flag. That's going to uh, negate the best run for Harris. Holding number 73 offense. 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay first down. Jonah Williams, the left tackle. Well, Jonah Williams played as a true freshman a year ago at right tackle, and now he's playing the left tackle spot. Let's see what happens. Oh, got a oh, jersey. Yep, right at the end. He grabbed the six on Matthew Butler's jersey. Damian Harris gives a good hit to Micah Abernathy on the end of the run, but it all came back, all for naught. First and 20 now. And Jacobs will take Damian Harris' spot in the backfield for the time. To get our referee back where he belongs before we snap it here at the 43 yard line. Here's a blitz again. Hurts in trouble, got around Golden, and here he goes. Slipped on his own and goes down short of the really 35. Really love what Bob Shoup is doing, Brad. Every time he's bringing someone off the edge to force this Alabama defense to make decisions. Offense, excuse me, to make decisions. 
Hertz got seven of it back. Second down at 13. Quick snap, quick throw behind Ridley, incomplete. Ridley a little upset on that one. Yep. Looked back to Hertz and went, what are you doing? Put that ball in front of me. He had a blocker in front of him, and he knew he had some great yep. grass. Watch at the end of the play when Ridley looks back and goes, come on. That brings up third down and long. Same look. Will they come inside with the linebackers? Third and very long. Nope. Nope. Four guys. Hurt stands in. Fires. Wow, complete. And on the way to the end zone, the ball is out. Touchback. Flag down as well. Herb Smith looked like he was heading for a touchdown, but the ball popped out, and we'll wait and see on the flag. Officials huddled back at the 40. Very reminiscent of the Florida game when Malik Davis fumbled it out of the back of the end zone. So the officials have a committee meeting here before the call. I didn't see a preliminary indication, so we're going to have to wait. Well, obviously, if it's on Alabama, Tennessee will decline. Personal foul, hands to the face, number one defense. Ooh. Ooh. The result of the play was a fumble through the end zone and resulting in a touchback. However, the penalty is enforced from the end of the run. The spot on the fumble, first and goal. Talk about a huge turnaround there. Looked like it was going to be Tennessee's ball, and instead, Alabama first and goal. Right there, Congo. Yes, good call. And then the play goes to Smith. He has it stripped from behind, but it doesn't matter. And you could see the frustration on Butch Jones. Team makes a great play, makes a big play, which is what he's been asking for, and it doesn't go. The other odd part of this call is it's added on to the end of the play at the point of the fumble. It's like pouring salt in the wound, yes. you know? So they're going to put it all the way down around the one-yard line. Another look from up top. The ball squirts out. Doesn't matter. Alabama on the recipient of the penalty. And first and goal. So think about that. Right where the ball goes out, that's where the penalty is enforced. Again, Quinn and Williams and Deron Payne will be lead blockers. Yeah, Butch says that doesn't seem right. <laughs> it's not going to win the argument. Nope. Earlier from the one yard line, it was Bo Scarborough, the only touchdown of the game from the one. Well, they got that look in, don't they? The elephants. Yep, they got the two big guys in there. They got Damian Harris behind them. And a whistle. Another flag down. Snap infraction, offense, five yard penalty, still first foul. Oh, boy, Nick is going to explode here pretty soon. Keeping his calm right now, but it's back down to the six-yard line. That changes everything. Yep. You could see Bozeman just kind of just double flinch. pumping yep. on the uh, center. Might be a case where he forgot the snap count. At any rate, it's out to the six-yard line now. And they go back to a completely different look here, obviously, then with the wide receivers back in there. And Harris still behind Hurts in the backfield. He's going to get the call anyway. Damian cuts to the outside. Good, Good job. Yes, sir. By the defense, and Abernathy led the way. Well, Second right, goal. Right at the point of attack. They force Damian wide. Watch, right there. Right at the point of attack, and then he goes wide. Good job by the linebacker and the safety. And second down a goal. We're under six minutes. Two freshman receivers in there right now, Ruggs and Judy. Ruggs only has four catches this year, but they're all touchdowns. Hurts. 
Scanning the field, lobbing it to the end zone. Broken up, Ridley had his hands on it, couldn't hold it, and he took a big shot from Warrior. I'm surprised he didn't throw the ball right off the get-go to Ridley. Ridley ran it out, and I thought he was open. Watch Ridley run his out cut, and that's a good play. Throw it. Throw it. Oh, man. Now you got problems. And then you got problems with Ridley taking a big shot at the end of the play. As he gets hit by 18. Funny spot Warriors, the yeah. guy that made a hit. And your legs are not supposed to go that way. And, and if Jalen would have thrown the ball at the beginning, it would have been a touchdown. Or with a good throw, he had him. And instead, his top receiver limping off to the Alabama sideline. One more look at Ridley's routes here. And you can't have much better than that. That's an easy throw. Schamberger's chasing. Has no idea where the ball is. And now with his number one receiver out, at least momentarily, Jalen Hurts has three freshmen out there to work with. Third and goal. Pressured and he'll take off. Hurts, flags are down. He's down at the two. We'll wait and see what the penalties. Right, I'll tell you, this Tennessee's secondary and linebackers are really coming up and playing physical football in this football game. That flag looks like a defensive holding spot, though, to where they threw it. Holding, number 15, defense. Penalties half the distance to the goal from the end of the run. Replay third down. So penalties on the freshman, Schamberger. Just about everything that could go wrong has gone wrong for Tennessee. Grabbed him just about as much as the other grab at the other end of the field, but this time he got caught. Now it's back down at the one yard line again. That's where we started all this about five minutes ago. Two tight end set. In fact, a third one with Smith in there. Harris, the tailback, they fake it to him. Hurts from up on top. Waits until the last moment. Man, to that was dangerous. Fourth down. The third down play action passes have not been working. Tennessee was ready for it. Covered well that time. Nowhere to go. Hurts just has to get rid of it. And Nick Saban says, okay, let's put out an extra lineman. Let's get two defensive linemen out there. And let's try to run into the end zone. But we're going to have a timeout first. A fourth and goal coming up for the Tide when we return. Adam Zucker in New York coming up on the Geico Halftime Report. Rick DJ and I get you caught up on today's action, including number 10 Oklahoma State. Escaping from Austin in overtime, Longhorns QB Sam Ellinger on third down. The interception. The Cowboys win as we go back to Tuscaloosa. Your BJ's really happy about that, Zook, huh? Seven nothing, Alabama. Just under five minutes to go, and the tide coming back with a fourth and goal. They've got about 900 extra pounds out there of blockers. Williams, Payne. Well, Bo went over the top last time, but he didn't make it by a lot. The other guys, Jedrick, Willis, Wills rather. So you add that to the normal five up front. And this is definitely their elephant set. Their last touchdown on fourth and one. Can they do it again? Scarborough did it last time in the first quarter. Same play. And the same result. Touchdown, Alabama. Well, it took them a long time. Yep. But they got it in there. Big Deron Payne, number 94. Follow that guy. As I said, 900 extra pounds over on that side, and most Gabro for the second time today in the end zone. It wasn't pretty, I'll tell you that. No, it wasn't. 
but it was effective enough. Pabinastis extra point is good. 85 yards in 15 plays. Took him a little over four and a half minutes. And Bo knows touchdowns. 14-0 Alabama. Coming up, Geico Halftime Report. Adam, Rick, and BJ will have scores and highlights from games earlier. Talk about this one. Look ahead to what is yet to come on this third Saturday of October. That is about four minutes and 48 seconds away. And it's a key part of the game for Tennessee if they want to stay in it. Remember, Bama gets the ball in the second half. Tennessee only has three first downs. They need a couple to get out of this half. They don't want to give Alabama the ball now and then give it again at the beginning of the second half. Alabama, to this point on the season, has outscored their opponents 183 to 26 in the second quarter. That's good. That's good. Yes. Chandler from the four. And got it out maybe to the 22-yard line. And a little bit earlier, we asked you our Aflac trivia question. I know you've been waiting on this one. And the question was, which head coach has the most wins in this series? How about Bear Bryant? That's Seems easy. easy. Yeah, that's pretty easy. Yeah. 16. But he's got, you know, pretty impressive company, too. General Nealon. Phil Fulmer, 10, and Nick's riding a 10-game streak right now. Nick is 12-1 overall against Tennessee, 10-0 as the head coach at Alabama. First down, so big here. You get a negative play, Alabama's going to start using their timeouts, or Tennessee won't be aggressive. Tennessee 50 yards so far in the first half. Play fake, Garantano is going to keep it. And he took another one of those oh, hits. I tell you, Alabama's defense ate it up. Everybody that was out there was covered. It's almost as if they knew the play. And now we got Trey Smith injured on the play. Their sensational freshman offensive lineman holding his left foot. Yep. Second highest graded offensive lineman on the team. Started every game. And this time he must get rolled up. Yep, yeah, right oh, at the end right of the, the end. play. He wasn't even standing up. Watch right here. First, he's tripped a little bit there. Yep, and he's down there going, I got he's my guy. Driving. I got yeah. my guy. I buried my guy. Oh, and man. He takes a shot. That is a bad break. Well, we hope it's not a break. Yes. <laughs> Freshman out of Humboldt, Tennessee. A big fella, 6'6", 320. And he was blocking a big guy, Raquan Davis, number 99. Just got rolled up on by Isaiah Bugs at the end of the play. Not anything Bugs was trying to do. He was just involved with the tackle. Right. And it seemed like he was down on the ground forever there. Tackling Garantano, and then he spins right into him. Oh. Come on, and get up, big up. guy. Get up, big guy. Takes three guys, including the head coach, to come out there to lift him up. That's a good sign that he's going off Five on his own. Five-star recruit, prize of the recruiting class a year ago. And he's lived up to expectations. Mm -hmm. So he's one of the leaders on the team, too, and that's hard to do as a freshman. So hopefully he'll be able to come back. In the meantime, second down and seven for the Vols. Ryan Johnson will take Trey's spot on that offensive front. Here in town of four out of five, but only 25 yards. And unable to get Marquez Callaway and some of those playmakers involved. Callaway's to the bottom of your screen. Here in looking towards him, going deep. Callaway's there, almost a one-handed catch. Incomplete. Well-thrown ball, but well defended. It almost had to be perfect to get the completion. Levi Wallace was on the coverage. Marquez. Watch how good this ball would have had to have been thrown. It was about a yard too far. Yep. Marquez had a huge game in the season opener against Georgia Tech. Four catches, over 100 yards, and a couple of touchdowns. And Almost snared that one with yeah. one hand. And he had that big catch against Florida that got him down to the one-yard line where they didn't score. Haven't converted a third down in this half. 
third and seven as Garantano comes up to the line the entire tied defense looks over to coach Saban and company Garantano going down and yes, Levi sir. Wallace yep. another one of those linebacker money back safeties corners they come from every angle coming right over here from the left side way outside and he gets inside beautifully designed blitz from the corner tackle couldn't handle him because he had his own business going on and he cut inside him for the sack forces a punt and how put well put together the defensive end rushes upfield Wallace goes inside Xavier marks back to return the punt this is a good punt backs him up but it's returnable to the 25 that's where marks will take off made the first man miss Got 10, 15 more. Marks on the way back into Tennessee territory. Returnable. A good looking return it was. 58 yard kick, but they took it 32 yards back the other way. And it might be moving back. Flag down. A lot of talking going on in this one right here from the officials. And here's the call. Here in the return, illegal block in the back, number 31, return team. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul, first down. Keaton Anderson is the guilty party. It's not going to make Coach Saban too happy either. Negates a big play. Let's see if we can get a picture of this. There he is right here. Ooh, it's close, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, it was. I thought he got his head in front of him. Keaton Anderson throws ahead. Boy, I thought he got his head across the body there. I did too. You know, I'm not a big fan of that block, but it's legal. Yeah. Those used to be highlight plays, yeah. not penalties. It was close, I'll say that. So it backs it up to the 23. Ridley's back in there, by the way. Jacobs fights his way for maybe three. And we're down around three to play in the first half. Alabama going with a little tempo here. They've got two timeouts remaining and three minutes to work with. Four-man rush on Hurts. Fires wide open is Ridley. That time he put it on it. First down. Talking about turning a defender around that time. Watch his fake. Woo! Okay. Turns him completely around, spins him. Ridley caught 72 balls last year. His best was his freshman year with 89 catches. And this time, Tennessee's defense does a nice job containing Jalen Hurts, who yeah, couldn't another, get out of the pocket. Another corner blitz that time. Bob Shoot continues to be aggressive with his defense. Ridley back out to the right side. Hurts on a second down and 11 here from the Tennessee 49. Here comes an extra brusher as well. Hurts going deep. Ridley out there overshot him and complete. The flag is down. Boy, this has been a sloppy Alabama football game. This one might go the other way, though. Personal foul. Hands to the face. Number one. Jeez. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. First down. That's Con boy, that's oh Conboy's second one. Yes, and the, the, the last one was a killer. This one might be just as bad. Oh, it's a replay it, of the it, last it is. one. Carbon copy. Yes. Got Jonah Williams by the throat for the second time. And remember, the last one was on a turnover to the team. This one was just as big. So a first down by penalty for Alabama. Coach inside the 35. Coaches want to go crazy with those self-inflicted plays. Straight give to Jacobs. Follows his blockers. Jacobs down the sideline. Another big play by number eight. Keep rolling in different running backs. Well, Doesn't this, matter. This time it was Matt Womack right there in the right tackle. Gets his man. 
Pushes him around. Great read that time by Jacobs. And again, Alabama goes hurry up and go right back to Jacobs. Maybe a yard that time. Under two minutes, but Alabama driving down around the 10 yard line of Tennessee. All the time in the world. Jalen Hurts always has that look on his face. He is a cool customer. And his team kind of plays just like him. He affects their stature and the way they walk to the line of scrimmage. The Verizon Red Zone's been good to Alabama today. Two for two and touchdowns. Both one yard plungers by Scarborough. Second and nine. Harris, little hesitation, and then straight ahead. Touchdown, Damian Harris. Third rushing score of the day for the Tide. Yep, two personal fouls on the defensive line. Watch Davian set his foot and go. One cut, go. Remember one of his goals, one yep. cut runs? That was, was a one cut straight yep. ahead. Exactly what his goal was. Pappet Asterson for the extra point. Is good. So 118 remaining in the first half. Again, those were the personal improvement goals. And that one right there, the one cut runs. Well, the last one was a one cut 11 yard touchdown to cap a 77 yard march in six plays. A little over two minutes, and now it's 21 0 Alabama. Damian Harris gets in the act with a touchdown. For him, his 10th of the season. So 21 to nothing, Alabama. Just over a minute to play in the half. AK Scott to kick. And this one will come out to the 25 for Tennessee. Tennessee well, had some opportunities, but penalties killed them. Looked exactly the same. Remember the first one by Congbo. Tennessee would have got the ball back, led to a touchdown. That was a touchback that was called back and given the ball to Alabama at the one. Here's the second one. Would have been third and ten. Led to a touchdown by Damian Harris. It's tough enough to beat Alabama when you're playing smartly, yeah. let alone dumb. So now two timeouts for Tennessee, 118 remaining in a half. John Kelly has been a non-factor today, and now Garantano down three touchdowns. See what they let him do. They're going to give it to Kelly on a draw. Kelly straight up the middle. That's his best play of the day. Yeah, well-designed play. Fake the pass. It was a delayed draw. Alabama ran right by it. Kelly got in the secondary. Good play. Down to a minute. Garantano wants to throw a screen. Lobs it out there to Kelly. And Kelly down the sideline. Another good game. Took a shot out of bounds. And they move the chains again. I'll tell you, number one impression I've had is Tennessee has come here to play tough physical football. You know, they've accomplished that. Number two is Garantano does not seem to be overwhelmed with this game at all. I mean, it's not great, but he's not looking like a, a deer in the headlights. Didn't get the first out, second of two. Garantano waits and waits and fires deep sideline for Callaway. Out of bounds, incomplete. Anthony Averitt was covering back there. Not a lot of separation, is there? Nope. Now they need to get the first down. Yep. See if they keep it on the ground with two timeouts remaining. Looking for only their fifth first down of the day. Kevin Meeker Fitzpatrick out there is like having another coach. <laughs> He's telling everybody what to do. Including getting ready to come off the yes. edge. Tennessee takes a timeout. Well, they burn one there. Charge. It's not what I was thinking about 
when they take their next time out, but they do. Get your weekend started while well, the Dolphins head north to battle the Ravens. Light up the night. Thursday night football on CBS and NFL Network. Here it's Alabama 21 to nothing over Tennessee with 48 seconds remaining. And now Tennessee's down to one timeout. Yeah, Garantano making his second start quarterback for Tennessee. And as Gary said, it really hasn't been his fault at all that they're three touchdowns behind. Let's see what he does. Third down at two. He's got John Kelly with him in the backfield. Alabama thinking about a blitz off the corner. They back out of it. Comes from the other side, though, and Garantano hit as he throws, but he got it out there complete. First totally down. Hung in there, waited till the last second. Felt the rush coming in from Mika Fitzpatrick and delivered a good throw. Took a big hit. Callaway made a great catch on the sideline. Points would be huge here for Tennessee, just knowing that they can move the ball. Tennessee substituted, so the officials allowed Alabama to substitute. They declined. Just inside the Alabama 45, first down. Antano thought about running and now throws again to the sideline of Callaway. And he got about a foot out of that one. It's a catch, but very little game. We're down at 35 seconds. One thing that is noticeable because of the injuries that Alabama had to edge rushers, they're not as dynamic as they were a year ago with Williams and Anderson. Second and ten. Four receivers out there for Garantano. Waits, waits too long. Down he goes. And it's Davis and Ray in there combining on the sack. Beautiful stunt here this time by Davis. Anthony. And then a stunt behind him. Watch this. Go in, take up a blocker. Look at the secondary. Good coverage. Has to hold on to the ball. Sack. Tennessee's not going to take their last time out either. Going to let the clock run out. Now it stops at two. I wonder if they'll throw a deep one to Juwan Jennings. Oops. He's not here. That's right. <laughs> they wish he was. <laughs> well, that is a point about Tennessee. Two of their great players and their leaders, Devon Kirkland and Juwan Jennings, are not playing. It has hurt this team. Both with wrist injuries, lost for the year. So now we got one play left. There's the big play guy, Marquez Callaway. And we assume we're going to see Jared Garantano's arm on this last play. It's a long throw. Let's say that. Sure is. Line of scrimmage is going to be the 47 yard line. There's how far he's going to throw it. Be interesting to see how Jeremy Pruitt defends it. Will he attack the quarterback or will he defend deep? He it's just too deep. Normal defense. Last play of the half, barring a penalty. Dan Tunnel flushed out of the pocket by Payne. Oh, now he really he took a shot, shot as he let it go. I'm not sure that play was worth it. Jeez, I don't either. He lost get, his helmet I and everything credit. else. Garantano's a tough football player, I'll tell you that. This might help this Tennessee team the rest of the season because Alabama is teeing off on him. Ooh, man. Good for Jared Garantano. Tennessee heads to the locker room trailing by three touchdowns, but they got a tough quarterback out there. Alley's with the leading coach. Coach, your team turned it around, but why the slow start offensively? Well, you know, we didn't do very well in practice all week, so it's a good lesson that if you don't prepare right for the game, you know, you're not going to play well in the game. We don't have a lot of energy. We didn't have a lot of enthusiasm. I'm not really pleased with the way we played, even though in the last two drives we were a little better. 
How do you make sure they have that sense of urgency that you asked for to start this game? I don't know. I'm going to use all my psychological disposition <laughs> that I can at halftime. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to be nice to you. <laughs> good luck, Coach. Thank you. Much he's, appreciated. He's at least smiling. I, I, that's, it's, that's pretty good. Allie, that's, uh, it, if it would have been me asking that, it would have been a different answer. Absolutely. You would have gotten the stare. Yes. That would have been it. Well, Bo Scarborough twice from a yard out. Damian Harris once from 11 yards out. 21 nothing halftime as we head to Zook and the guys in New York. All right, thanks, Ness. Yeah, Nick Saban right back to that stare a moment later with the next interview. Coming up on the Geico Halftime Report, Rick, BJ, and I will show you how Oklahoma State corralled an overtime win in Austin after this word from your local station. As you look in on Bryant Denny Stadium in Tuscaloosa, just about set to start the third quarter with Alabama owning a 21 to nothing lead. And they'll get the football first to start the second half. That's Henry Ruggs back deep. So Maglia's kick. Returnable from the nine. Rugs out around the 23 yard line brought down there. That's where Alabama will go to work offensively. 21 to nothing. Brad Nestler, Gary Downey's and Alley's on the field. And we'll see what the power of persuasion for Coach Saban right. his philosophical whatever prowess. Well, they played eight straight games. The buy is <laughs> coming up and then the finish of their season. So if they get through this one, I think Nick will be ultimately happy. Tennessee, though. I think the good is they played physical. Jared Garitano was not, you know, this stage was not too big. The bad, the penalties, yes. you know, and only 66 yards in the first half total offense. Those self-inflicted wounds were yes. terrible. They were backbreakers. They don't have a turnover, but those two penalties were just like turnovers. Play action. Jalen Hurts rolls and throws wide open. First down throw to Judy. And if he ever goes down, we're going to go down the field and check in with Allie. Gary, you basically summed up my conversation with Butch Jones at the half. He said we were off the field twice, and then we hurt ourselves with the penalties. And he said when you make mistakes against Alabama, everything is magnified. He's really happy at how hard and physical they're playing. Just can't hurt themselves. See if they can come up with a stop on the opening drive for Alabama. As Damian Harris almost kept his balance again and got extra he did get a couple extra yards when it looked like he was going down Schamberger made the hit Harris with a touchdown in the first half 62 yards now 12 carries and the other good is I've swallowed a pharmacy and I'm feeling a little better <laughs> Harris just weaving his way for the first down and still going backpedaling his way across the 45 so a good start to this quarter for Alabama. You know, interesting part of this football game here at the start of the second half. Alabama starts out with a play action pass on first down. And the other thing that really strikes me is they have not designed to run any plays for Jalen Hurts. He throws a strike to Ridley and another first down. So the trends from the first half. Kind of carrying over right now. The running backs doing their job. Scarborough and Harris combining for three touchdowns. Garantano, seven out of 11, but only 38 yards. And he was beat up, including the last play of the second quarter when he really took a shot. And Tennessee still hasn't scored in the last 12 quarters. And Sean Schamberger, their starter, true freshman cornerback, shaking up on that last play. And I think Kendall Vickers is down too, is he not? I think two players There's are down. Two balls down to the same spot almost. It is. We'll check on both those guys when we come back. Welcome back to Tuscaloosa. Two Tennessee players went down on the field before we went to break. We're back. Kendall Vickers is being stretched out. They were stretching his quads. Important to keep in mind, he was being stretched out before the half started, too. And Sean Schamberger is back up on the sidelines and cleared to return. So that makes Shaq Wiggins the corner right now. And it moves Alexis Johnson into Vickers' spot, at least for this snap. And that's because uh, you're seeing Shaq Wiggins because Justin Martin, their young corner, is injured and not playing in this football game. That's why you're seeing Chamber to begin with. Well, the only thing that stopped Alabama's offensive march here early in the third quarter is the injuries to two players for Tennessee. They've moved it from their own 24-yard line. Oh, 
Joe Scarborough got a couple more. Khalil McKenzie and on the stop. Again, Alabama going with some tempo here. Just inside the Tennessee 30. Scarborough out in the flat. Hurts fakes it to him and comes down the middle, complete first down. I'll tell you, one of the questions or critiques by, I had of Alabama a year ago with Jalen Hurts is they refused to throw the ball over the middle of the field. As Jalen Hurts has grown, and with Brian Dable in the offense, they're starting to throw the ball in the middle. Back to the ground to Scarborough. You know, Ness, most games, it doesn't hurt Alabama. But Alabama, when they play their games, we talked to Nick about this. There's Brian Dable right there, new coordinator. They're playing with a mind on Clemson, Ohio State, Georgia, down the road. And down the middle and a touchdown to Smith this time. He holds on to it. Doesn't let it bobble out of the back of the end zone and the tide with a 14-yard touchdown pass. Plays that we did not see a year ago. We are seeing this year. Jalen Hurts has earned the confidence of the staff from Alabama. There he is. Tight end, right down the middle. You're going to attack that running game. You attack the middle of the defense. Wide open Smith for the touchdown. So everything Brian dialed up on that drive worked. And the extra point works as well. So just like that, Alabama comes out of the locker room after hearing from their head coach. Goes 76 yards in eight plays. They cap it with a touchdown pass. It's 28 to nothing. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by Cricket Wireless. New York Life. Outback Steakhouse. And by Geico. Paul Bear Bryant Museum, not too far away from Bryant Danny Stadium. Nice to have a museum and a stadium named after you. It's because you won a lot of games here. And there was a lot of players of the game, I'm sure, in I that museum. And with that, don't forget later in the game, play the game presented by Napa Auto Parts. Have you had anything named after you? Nothing. Uh, my daughter. Yes, I was well, going to say. Well, she's a Nestler anyway. Yeah, that's right. it. <laughs> Tennessee has gone 28 days since their last touchdown. Mm. And that young man desperately wants to get him one, but now he's in a four-touchdown hole. Remember when Tennessee had the ball with five minutes to go in the half, first and ten? I said this is a dangerous part of the game. They went three and out. Alabama scored. Alabama gets the ball. It goes from 14 nothing to 28 nothing. Just like that. The kick will go to the goal line. To Ty Chandler. Chandler spins out to the 25. So he earned that one. There's a flag down though. So his 25 yard return might be coming back. return holding number 48 return team half the distance to the goal for the spot of the foul first down well Jared Garantano's only been sacked twice but he's been pressured more than 10 times whether he tries to run it bootleg it or drop back in the pocket that Alabama defense has given him fits that's the shot he took on the last play of the half that he won't forget for a while yeah that was a questionable play. They weren't going to even throw it that far. Uh, you know, he took a huge hit. That's one they could have saved. So with a penalty, it was spotted. The flag was around and, the 20. And remember, they took a timeout to call that one. Yeah. And they work inside the 10-yard line. John Kelly, hard-earned two yards. I can guarantee you right now, this Alabama defense is smelling shutout. They're very aware of what Georgia did to this Tennessee team, and they now want to shut out. Georgia, a 41 to nothing game that we did. And of course, Alabama, a jo 59 to nothing win over Vandy that we did. Georgia held Tennessee to under 150 yards total offense in that game. 
And a lot of people think the collision course for Atlanta will be Alabama and Georgia. Still got a long way to go. Georgia off this week before we head to Jacksonville next week. Garantano sacked for the third time, and he's mugged inside the five. Levi Wallace, first guy there, Isaiah Bugs joined him. Boy, I'll tell you, in these situations, there's not a lot you can do. Same blitz again. Levi Wallace coming from the right side, and it's almost a feeding frenzy right now. So now they're really in a tough spot. Third down and a mile. And Garitano's going to be in his own end zone to take this snap. Center judge is talking to Coleman, Tom Coleman Thomas whether he's injured. Well, he was down for a while. I know. And now he's coming out. Yep. Now we wonder if they'll put Jay Sean Robertson back at center. Meanwhile, the crowd down there is going to make it tough. And I think Robinson will go back to center. So now the snap's got to be clean. Garantano's two yards deep in his own end zone when he takes it. Draw play to Kelly. And Kelly, nice run, held out of the ball, almost got a first down. Sure did. I'll tell you, Kelly is showing his skills. He's a physical runner, very quick. Tough to get a big hit on him because of his size, and he likes to play football. Got him a little breathing room for the punter, at least. Trevor Daniel, who's had an up-and-down day. Mark's had a nice return. And the last punt negated by a penalty. Got a back pedal. He'll get a shot at this one, though. Over the shoulder catch. Not quite a catch. Whoop, picked it up. Was his knee down? Apparently not. Got it out to the 23-yard line. They had a couple bobble punts a week ago. Yeah. And three in a row. That one hit his shoulder pad. Bounced up, and then I thought maybe his knee was down right there. Did it? Apparently did it? not. Nope. Dude, That's dangerous, close. though. <laughs> dangerous. Jalen Hurts on the Alabama sideline, his ninth touchdown pass on the last drive. And it wasn't just one pass over the middle, there were three of them to take this Tennessee defense and give them different problems. Apparently at a halftime, Alabama went in and said, we're trying to do too much perimeter, let's go to the middle, and it was open. I remember, Herb Smith had a catch earlier, but lost it out of the back yes. of the end zone on that penalty, but that last drive, perfect. And we're going to switch it up at quarterback. That's one thing. Jalen Hurts hasn't had to play the entire game. Tonga Bailoa, the freshman quarterback who we saw really whip it around against Vanderbilt, gives off to another freshman, Matthew Harris. Remember the play that Tua had against Vanderbilt that we just looked at each other and went, wow, how yes. did he do that? Still hard to believe that he could readjust his eyes that fast and judge this throw. <laughs> and you know, we weren't the only one that was pressed with that. No, in fact, his own teammates were. Yes. Najee Harris first down on the top. Well, and, and just as nice, his quarterback teammate, Jalen Hurts, was impressed with it. Watch this great reaction from Jalen. He's like, all right. And then probably said, how did you goes, how did you do that? I know good, and that's good. <laughs> Tagovailoa out in the flat to Harris again. So they got the passing game going on right now, freshman to freshman. Some of the passes that two are through in that Vanderbilt game we did would make your eyes pop. Oh, yeah, he's got a gift. There's no doubt about that. Jalen's got a unique set of tools but that guy could throw and that was a good throw too but Ridley couldn't handle it and now a flag comes in it's gonna be pass interference on Schamberger I know Joe Namath's here at the game he's probably going that kid can throw <laughs> look where that ball is put 
perfectly without interference. That is A to B Pass interference. as fast as you Number can do 15, it. 15 defense. The penalty is 15 yards from the previous spot. First down. And if Jalen is done for the day, those would be the numbers he has. We were looking at comparison statistically of Jalen last year and this year, and they were almost completely the same. But the problem is he doesn't get to play in the exactly. second half. He's not going to get the yards, you know, and they're not running him as much this year either. Remember, he came here to be a pro quarterback, not to be a quarterback draw quarterback. Back in Tennessee territory, Alabama with a first down. Tagovailoa out on the flat, Ridley. The open field, what a move, got down to the 41. Just the subtle things that Tua can bring to a pass offense. He was ready to throw that ball downfield, and at the last second, he readjusted, knew where his outlet was, and delivered a strike. Again, he has unteachable skills in throwing the ball. Second down and three. Najee Harris hesitates a little bit and then dives forward. He's short for the first down. He'll bring up third down and about a yard. So the first half of the third quarter totally belongs to Alabama. See if they can keep the drive going up third and short. And <laughs> Tua is going to carry it himself. <laughs> there hasn't been a call to run <laughs> for the quarterback all game. And so Tua take a blow. Talking about Laya. And he keeps it. And gets a first down. <laughs> that is funny. The thrower becomes a runner. And has a first down of the 37. And he's going to quarterback draw this one. Tua Tagovailoa down to the 20 yard line. Back Boy, to back you, runs. You talk about scouting report busters. Jalen Hurst comes out throwing over the middle. And what happens? They let the passing quarterback run. This will keep the defensive coordinators awake at night Absolutely. for the next five weeks. Back to Harris. They're back in the red zone where they have been spectacular today with touchdowns. And it'll keep the coaches in this league going, wait a second, I'm dying for a quarterback <laughs> and they got two? Yeah. <laughs> now Josh Jacobs comes back into the Alabama backfield. You know, and he also, Nick Saban wanted him to play with the first group in here. Back to throw, zips it complete to Ridley, first and goal. Put it on the outside hip, away from the defender, can't stop it. We are at a little bit of an angle from our box up here, and you could see that opening up exactly that way, the way the ball was thrown. Back to the ground they go. Jacobs inside the five before he's pushed back. Watch the curl route come right up to the middle right there. Stop, ball to the outside shoulder, perfectly done. Jacobs wrapped up at the line of scrimmage that time. It'll be third and goal. You know, even practice the other day, yeah. watching Ridley run routes, Oh, he's, he's a great route He's runner. a lot like Amari Cooper, a tactician in his routes. He's up top on third and goal. Blitz coming. Tagovailoa waits, fires, oh, and intercepted by Batuli. The linebacker going the other way. Batuli down the sideline. Big play for Tennessee's defense. He's still going. Inside the 20, he's going to score. Touchdown, 97 yards. I think it was a one-handed interception. Well, they've been looking for a chunk play. They get it from their defense. And there is the end of the streak of 28 quarters without, or 28 days without a touchdown. That's a long way for a linebacker to run. He did a job. It's of it. interesting, but Tully never moves. He's the middle linebacker. He's spying, and he never moves to get the interception. Extra point coming up. He was trying to go to Bridley on the play as well. We'll get another look at it after the extra point by. Samaglia. 
First touchdown since the second quarter against UMass. It's a long time ago. First unsportsmanlike conduct foul of the game. This is a touchdown. So Tennessee finally on the board. Trying to make it 28 to 7. Good. So we're just over six minutes remaining in the third quarter. Volunteers on the board. Check out Batuli right here. He's playing middle linebacker in this set. He's right there. And the pass is going to go to Ridley at the back of the end zone. They connect. The ball is thrown hard. And he stands there. And boom. Right to him. <laughs> Never moved his feet. He did after that, 97 yards of moving his feet. I thought Cam Sims was going to get him. And number 18, Nigel Warrior, kind of shoved him right by on the play. And then the penalty. Oh, oh. okay, there's the penalty. Yeah, not a good up, idea. Not a good idea. Had a pretty good game up to that point, Rashawn. A happy linebacker after a 97-yard romp with an interception <laughs> for the touchdown. A pick six that went a long ways, but then his teammate with a two-finger salute makes the kickoff from the 20-yard line. Well, you will have to say defensive coordinator Bob Shoup had Batuli lined up in the right spot. <laughs> right on the right spot. So this is going to be returnable on the kick. Let's see where Ruggs will take it. Right at the 20. Ruggs comes near side. Pops out to the 40, still on his feet. He'll go down at the 40. Oh, confident on the field and in the classroom. Here's today's scholar athletes presented by Quicken Loans. Brett Kendrick, offensive lineman for Tennessee. And likewise on the offensive line, Ross Pierce Baker for Alabama. Quicken Loans commitment to the investment of our future shown today by donating $1,000 to Tennessee and Alabama's general scholarship funds. Really like that uh, Alabama is not going to go back to Jalen Hurts here. I mean, you know, a lot of good things that happens. You throw the ball over the middle. That time it was thrown about a foot too low. Taking him out now would not be great. Whoops. Got, yep. Almost dropped the football. Check in with Allie. Guys, Daniel Batuli was talking with his teammates on the bench, and he was still trying to recover from that long run, but he told him a story. He said, when I caught that ball and I looked up, I thought, oh, crap, I got to run all that way, and they all started <laughs> laughing. <laughs> well, it's the fourth longest interception return in Tennessee history. Evan Berry had the longest 100-yarder in the Outback Bowl a few years ago. Now Jacobs holds on to this one, and he's still going into Tennessee territory. So it may be that um, Alabama will not punish Tua for keep leaving the game, but they may not let him throw. <laughs> well, they don't need to throw right now with a 21-point lead and five minutes left in the third quarter. I'm sure he'll put another one up sometime. Yep. Here it is. Right here. Out the flat, perfect. Out to Hesitz, the tight end, still going. And a first down. Dale Hedges, one of the captains today. Get it out of your hand, get it to your playmakers, let them do something. And Warrior, instead of trying to bring him down, was trying to hold on to the football, and Hedges was saying, I got this. And now, Micah Abernathy's down for Tennessee. Check on him when we come back. A little under five minutes from ending third quarter. Welcome back. Micah Abernathy dealing with an injury. I have yet to be told exactly what this injury is, but I can tell you that earlier in the game, he was dealing with a lot of cramping. They had him moving around on the sideline anytime he was on the sideline riding the bike, giving him extra electrolytes, so it could be related to the cramping. Okay, Ali, thanks. The junior out of Atlanta. And with him out, Theo Jackson comes in to play that spot in the secondary. All right, and still no Justin Martin, so you know he's not able to play. 
Nagavalo fires complete. And it's Ruggs. Uh, Judy, beg your pardon. Jerry Judy with a first down catch. Tagovailoa wanted to go to the back in the flat. It was covered. He was patient, patient. Then he readjusts and delivers. Well, first down at the 13. Play fake. Tagovailoa to the corner. Threw it. Over everybody, incomplete as we go to Adam Zucker in New York studio for a Ford update. Zuck. All right, Ness, we're in the fourth quarter on CBS Sports Network. Navy clawing back against undefeated UCF. Give the fullback some love, Anthony Gargiulo. It's 24-21 with 12 minutes to go. Zach Aby out of this game for the mids. Back to you. Love giving the fullback a little sugar. We don't have to worry about that today. Nobody's got a fullback on either one of these teams. That's right. Second down at 10 from the 13. Jump cut by Jacobs down to the 10. You know, I've been really impressed with the physical play, especially on the defensive line. And let's salute Brady Hoke, defensive line coach for Tennessee. Got his guys ready to play. Former Michigan head man. Went out to Oregon for a year. And he head back to Tennessee. <laughs> He's working it on the sideline. Third down and seven. They fake the blitz back out of it. Down to Iloa. Flag down. It's going to be a holding call. It goes short to Jacobs. Made a couple guys miss, but I think it's all coming back. Probably be declined. Yeah. Tell you what, he's got that spin move down in the backfield. He does. We just showed you the one from the van Zip. game. Whoop. But then it took long enough to one of his guys is guilty back there. I'd love to have brakes that good on my car. Well, he is calm. Those two quarterbacks. Holding number 75 offense. The penalties decline. The result of the play is fourth down. Tying of a low and hurts both very calm. No anxiety. Neither one of them. Right. Papanastas will come out to try a field goal. He's 12 of 15 on the year. And the plays now in this game, because of the interception return, it's one of the reasons. 70 to 30 in the game. There's Andy's numbers. 46 yarder was against Colorado State. This one will be from just outside 25. And the kick is up and good. So Alabama attacks three more on to their lead with 313 remaining and it's 31 to 7 tied. We go to another good rivalry next week. Best game for the best conference. The Bulldogs of Georgia, the Gators of Florida. Dogs, best start in 12 years. But the Gators have always been a burr under their collar. That's next week. Starts with State Farm College football today, 3 o'clock. And then Allie, Gary, and I'll bring it to you from Jacksonville next Saturday. CBS Sports. So Alabama, a 28-yard drive. They didn't have to go very far. In eight plays, just under three minutes to get that field goal. And remember, the plays are mounting up against Tennessee. Can't stop them. And Tennessee's offense had the ball once for a three and out in the third quarter. And this one will come out to the 25 and give us a chance to remind you. Coming up Wednesday on CBS, David Moriana stars in a new drama about the most trusted team in the war on terror. SEAL Team, new episode, Wednesday after Survivor only, CBS. That's my kind of show right there. You like that one, yep. don't you? Yeah. Yep. Uh, this you don't like so much in, if you're a Tennessee fan. <laughs> That's not good. That's the look. 74 yards. Oh. Total offense. That's what, two and a half yards of play, maybe? Something like that. They'll work from the 25. And again, their only touchdown was a 97-yard interception returned by their linebacker, Batuli. Chandler and Kelly both in the backfield with Garantano. And now Chandler flushes out of there. Kelly goes straight ahead. Nice run. Five. Nice run. If you had uh, about 30 of uh, guys like number four, you'd have a really good team. Totally. And he runs, and he always falls forward. Picked up five, second and five. 43 yards for John. And Jay Sean Robinson just went out of the game, I think. 
That ball, that last play was run right at him, too. Kelly again. Wow, look at that. That's what Gary's talking about. That looked like he was going to stop for a two-yard gain. He got a first down. And believe me, we were talking to Nick Saban about what NFL scouts look at, and he goes, they don't care how many plays you run. We get cut-ups. You show me 15 good plays, I might draft you. <laughs> People will look at Kelly running that ball right there against Alabama. Kelly now comes out as a wide out in the slot. Empty backfield for Garantano. Oh, he waited too long, and he got leveled by Rashawn Evans. Evans is getting quicker every week. The healthier he gets, the faster he gets. Watch Mika Fitzpatrick direct everybody on the field right here. Here he is pointing everybody to switch. He changed the blitz from one side of the field to the other and allowed a mismatch up front. Perfect Mika. job by Mika Fitzpatrick. He is some kind of player. He can play rush linebacker. He can play nickel. He can play safety. He plays corner. Head coach. Directs everybody. Yeah, head coach. <laughs> Kelly. Wow, another good run. And Nick Saban loves guys like Micah Fitzpatrick. This is what he had to say about him. Well, as anybody's ever coached in terms of work ethic, finishing plays, conditioning, phenomenal, important to him. He loves to play football. He doesn't want to come off the field even at practice. Well, they they uh, want to get guys reps, and he's like, no, I want to stay out here. How about before the game? He was out here an hour and a half before the game. <laughs> Running. Look at him, he's all over. Getting everybody lined up. Third and long. Dantano had it batted down at the line of scrimmage, and he hit the deck as well. Nick and Fitzpatrick, onside kick against Texas A&M, does everything. You know who he plays like? Troy Palomalu. Nice. Yeah, good one. You know, he just stood in the game, physical, coaching on the field. He just uh, a perfect football player. Nick said, yeah, coach does yell at me sometimes, like on that onside kick. I was supposed to just hit the deck instead of try to run it back for a touchdown. Here's a punt. Marks catches this one cleanly at the 11. And pops it out across the 20. Got an update. Adam Zucker in New York. All right, Brad. Following a potential upset in the Big 12, number nine Oklahoma at Kansas State, where Alex Delton's making his second career start and doing his best Jesse Ertz right there after a Baker Mayfield interception. 21-10, Kansas State at the half. Back to you. Wow. Tough place to play, Manhattan. Here's another tough place to play, Tuscaloosa. <laughs> Alabama 31 to 7 as we're just about done with the third quarter. If you missed it, Jalen Hurts played into the third quarter, and then to a Tagabalo took over, and he's still in there, and he'll play the rest of the game. And he's playing with another freshman in the backfield right now, Najee Harris, who gets the handle here. Najee, nice cut behind his blockers, and out to the 29 yard line, and that should just about do it for quarter number three. When you go to practice, you cannot believe the size of Najee Harris. He's like 6'3", 225, glides with the football. A little bit like Derrick Henry size-wise. Yes, he is. We played three at Bryant Denny Stadium. End of the third quarter, the score, Alabama 31, Tennessee 7. In the 100th meeting between the balls and the tide, we'll return to Tuscaloosa right after this message. And a word from your local station. Set to start the fourth quarter in Tuscaloosa, Alabama up 31 to 7. And they've got a second down here and four to open up the quarter from their own 29 yard line. Here's a give to Najee Harris, who cuts back up the middle of the field and all the way out to the 46 yard line. So that's the way you open up the quarter. Brad Nessler and Gary Danielson with you from Bryant Denny Stadium. 
you know Alabama fans they expect a 50 point win every week because quite frankly they win by 50 a lot of times <laughs> but they're pretty efficient even though they were sloppy in the yes, first they half. are and even when they're not playing great you can see all the talent I mean they make plays outside of the offense you know and they've got a lot of parts obviously go to practice you see player after player there's so much competition in practice to get on the field including guys like this the freshman tailback who's got it out to midfield you know Thursday we went out there Brad and I asked uh, the coaches and we asked Nick I think they ran a hundred plays in practice and that Thursday and he started doing the certain right. situations he, had each one. And he, he knew exactly we had 28 plays right. of this and you got to 100 plays and, right. blitz and we were a hundred think about that their offense and they do individual period just in team period ran a hundred plays in practice on Thursday play action Agavalo, uh, fires that was a good pass too but Smith couldn't quite hold it and Schamberger was back there on the coverage. Weeks ranked number one in the AP poll in the last uh, nine years. Well, there's a little difference between Alabama 66 times and look at the rest of the crew here. <laughs> right. Florida's next. I think combined you have to get all the way to Oklahoma Southern Cal. <laughs> You're doing more math over there again. <laughs> Getting back to what Nick said when you said, did you run 100 plays? It was amazing, amazing. to me he went that he whole named practice. every yep. single practice uh, uh, as far as how many runs, how many right. blitzes, all that Let's stuff. Let's see, he went inside run, plus 20, blitz period. Two minute. Two minute. Right. That pass. Oh, if that's a catch, it's unbelievable. Did he keep his feet in? Cam Sims, he had to stretch all 6'5 of that and keep the tiptoes in. Wow. First of all, the ball's almost out of bounds, and look at that. Beautiful. And watch the quarterback go through his reads. Looks to his right, looks to his left, goes down the middle, and then he throws way on the sideline. I'm sure when Tua let go of that, he thought, oh, I threw that one too far out of bounds, but Sims had other ideas, and now Harris on the ground rips off another first down run. You saw the guys covered in that last look all over. He went right, left, middle. Oh, there's a guy way to the outside. Way to the outside. Yes. And they're approaching the red zone again, the tide. Harris flares out of the backfield. Tagovailoa. Oh, what a fake and touchdown, Alabama. I thought he was the passer. That's almost rubbing salt in the wounds, isn't it? 23-yard touchdown. And there was a move in there that broke some legs and hopefully didn't hurt some Tennessee players. A little motion to the outside. Quarterback draw. You got Bozeman in front. He nails his guy. Ooh. And then Tungamaloa just makes the safety whiff. Micah Abernathy missed him by about two yards after he put his foot in the ground and took it the rest of the way for a touchdown. Amazing play calling. Brian Dable is bringing that feel that he had when he was the coach at New England. Remember, one of the things that New England would do is run a different offense almost every week. That's what he's brought here. I got my running quarterback passing. I got my passing quarterback running. <laughs> He's not going to have Tom Brady running, but it, he's got two guys here that are young with young legs. Here's another look. Watch this move. Boom. Not even a touch. They were playing flag football. He wouldn't got him. And I think Sapp and Schamberger were both hurt on the play. And they're going off. Yeah, Schamberger was right there on the tackle at the end of the play for when... Uh, the touchdown was made. And this uh, defense is wearing out now. Yep. Still 13 minutes to go. A highly talented freshman known for the spin he can put on that ball with that left arm of his and instead did it with his legs to cap off that last drive. I bet you we got a great reaction from Jalen Hurts again on that one. Yeah, talking on the sideline is Kevin Asterson for the point after, which is up and good. A 77-yard 
touchdown march in just seven plays. Watch the block by Bradley Bozeman, the center. Watch Bozeman here. Sets it up. Seals it up. And then Tua does the rest. His second rushing touchdown of the year. This one from 23 yards out. His offensive coordinator says, I'm loving this. 38-7, Pipe. And now it's time for our Geico game recap. Well, Alabama today, tough on everybody, but the Volunteers are tough on themselves today. A couple of key penalties negated what would have been a touchback right there, the hands to the face by Congo. And then the Tide just rolling along over 500 yards again, and we still have a long way to go. Their backs have done it. Damian Harris did it from 11 yards out. Bo Scarborough twice from a yard out. Then Jalen Hurts goes to work down the middle of Irv Smith. Jalen, 13 out 21, 198, and a touchdown, and it's been tough on Jared Garantano today, making his second start ever, and the Tide defense has roughed him up. And they got their one score by Batuli, the linebacker, taking that throw, intercepting it, and going 97 yards for a touchdown. That's the only thing Tennessee's been able to do as far as putting points on the board, however. And then there was a field goal added by Alabama, and then finally, moments ago, uh, Ankle breaker right there by Tua Tagovailoa. Touchdown, 23 yards. That's where we sit. 38-7. Now you got to keep an eye on how long will Alabama keep their starters, regulars on defense out there. Remember, they played eight straight ga games. They have a bye week before LSU. But if they're going to have a successful season, they want to play 15 games. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We'll bring it out to the 25 for Tennessee's offense. We look kind of big picture, news and notes around the country. Player we really enjoyed spending time with, Jordan Sherrod out for the season with a hip injury. Yankees, uh, yeah. Yankee Stadium might be busy, so they're going to move the Maryland Rutgers game. And the first poll coming out in 10 days, the college football playoff, as the playoff will be ended at Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta. And that's where we'll be the first week of December for the SEC championship game. And will it be Alabama there again? Or will it be Georgia to meet them? Well, we still got a lot of football left to figure that out. But right now, Alabama looks like they're heading that way. Here's Ty Chandler giving some ground to try to gain some ground, and he got back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about it. We talked with Mika Fitzpatrick yesterday. He says, I've seen Garantano play. I played against him in high school. Huh. St. Peter's prep. You see Mika on the right. Garantano getting dragged down 49-20. That game, they beat him twice that year. He said, you know what? We got down to him in the first half, but we came back and we pretty much creamed him. <laughs> well, Mika's quarterback was Brandon Wimbush, the quarterback for Notre That's Dame. That's right. There was some speculation that maybe those two would go together at Notre Dame. But... He has come here and flourished from the north to the south. Handoff. Ty Chandler trying to get to the edge. Got, a, got about a yard and then got hammered by Averitt as we head to Adam Zucker in New York. Zuck. All right, Ernest, Mark Rick, the number eight Miami, second longest winning streak in the country, and going long against Syracuse, Malik Rozier, 48 yards for Jeff Thomas. Syracuse answered, though, with their first touchdown of the day, a seven-point game as the fourth quarter begins. Back to you. It's funny watching, uh, reading in the Atlanta papers this week. What a good deal it is for both teams. Kirby Smart in his second yeah. year, Mark Rick in his second right. year, both doing great. Well, we all know, uh, you know, that... Mark Rick can coach. He's proved that. And Kirby is proving it. Kelly loses yardage. And is that Minka Fitzpatrick? But no, it's one of the big guys slow to get up. It's Bugs. Minka Fitzpatrick did not play in the regular defense on first and second down, but he came in in the nickel. As we said, he can play about five spots on that defense. You know, during that last break, Jay Sean Robertson, their highest rated offensive lineman, center, left guard today, left the field in a cart. That was a good point. Marks way back at the 14. 
That pass one man, but that same man came behind. back and got him, and the ball is out. Yep. yep. Boy, punt returns have been a problem for Alabama. That Last will, week and this week. Yep, that will be a spot that this Alabama staff will start to rethink. You know, that guy that you made miss, you forget he's back yep. there. A nice hustle by 31 DJ Henderson to come back and force that ball out. There's a little discussion going on. You can tell Coach Saban not happy. And Tennessee has lost two of their top offensive linemen. Brett Kendrick is out, and Jay Sean Robertson is out. So a break for the Volunteers starting at the 20-yard line. They fake the fly sweep. Garantano steps in, now steps out. Throws on the run and throws a strike up to Callaway. His, see his skill set. As Tennessee looks forward with this football team, the rest of their schedule, as Garantano improves and where he goes from here, could be a huge story for this Tennessee team and Butch Jones. You know, you were talking earlier about how the Alabama defense would have loved to get a shutout. First of all, Tennessee's defense is the one that scored, and now the special teams fumble might lead to another score here. And from a zero on the scoreboard, it might end up being 14 and nothing the Alabama defense did wrong. Second and one. Garantano play action, pressure coming. Got it complete, but it's going to lose yardage. It's going to be roughing the passer. De'Ron Payne is going to get the call. De'Ron Payne just keeps going after this one. Yeah, it went too long. Yep. Personal foul, roughing the passer, number 94 defense. Half the distance to the goal from the previous spot, first down. So Duran trying to hand out a little pain, picks up the penalty. And it's going to be spotted now around the six. First and goal, just outside the five, make it. Garantano trying to be heard down there. Fans in that end zone making it as impossible as they can. Kelly. Ooh, what a hit he took after a two-yard gain from Ronnie Harrison. It always has been tough to get the ball with your running back outside of the Alabama defense. When Kelly has made his good runs, it's been gashing it in the middle of it. Alabama has allowed two rushing touchdowns all year. Second down and goal here. Kelly with Garantano in the volunteer backfield. From the three. Gets it again. And he is in. Touchdown, Tennessee. Well, three yard end, run. That ends a streak. 13 quarters without a touchdown for this offense. They didn't have to go far to get it because of the fumble punt. You can see the defense. Jennings has to stay honest with the quarterback. Gives him just enough room to score it inside. So John Kelly with his seventh rushing touchdown of the year. So Maglia in for the point after. You know what's been really good for Jared Carantana on this game also is they take the replay. It hasn't been messy. No delay of games. Yeah. Getting the team up. Center quarterback exchange. Good throws. He's gotten a hit. He's gotten back up. He's showing a lot of moxie in this game. I think they're going to see if Kelly was down before. I'm not sure the ball ever crossed the goal line. I don't line. think so either. And you see it right there. That's... About as good a shot as we can give you, I think. Yeah, that's that's the money shot, I think. Steve Lannis, our replay officials, they look at this. 
his helmet and his shoulder pads are well, in the end zone. And you but. know, you don't see his knees, so you don't know if he's on top of somebody and he rolls right. in. One more time, we take you down the line. There's his helmet. Oh, yeah, he hit. His, his hip landed on the ground. He's down. He's going to be short. It'll be about two feet out, I think, if they overturn this. Yeah. You know, just going back, as we look at this one more time, big picture for Tennessee. Getting through this game, hopefully they can get healthy on the offensive line. Gaining confidence about how physically they played in the game. Remember, in 2015, they lost to Alabama, but then won out. You know, they go to Kentucky, Southern Miss at Missouri, then LSU and Vandy. Could they do it again? Wow. <laughs> Butch Jones hopes so. Yes, <laughs> for sure. Here's a call. After further review, the ruling is the runner was down with the ball short of the goal line at the half yard line. It's third and goal at the half yard line. Well, let's see if John gets it again. He trots back out there with what we thought was his seventh rushing touchdown of the year. He's going to have to take another crack at it if he gets the touch. Well, he'll have two chances, right. third and fourth down, if he needs them both. Oh, no. Now they <laughs> moved. Now it's going to be third and goal at... Ball five start. and a half. Number oh 73 offense. Five yard penalty. Still third down. Remember the two penalties in the first half that led to Alabama touchdowns. Now this could lead again. Oh, the movement right there Trey by Trey Smith. Smith. Right. This changes the complexion of things quite a bit. Outside the five now, third and goal. Callaway in a slot on the left side. Josh Smith wide that way. It's Kelly anyway. No way, no how. Got inside the five, but that's it. And the red, red zone offense that has been such a big problem for Tennessee rears its head again with the penalty. Got 10 touchdowns in the red zone this year. Trying to get another one here, but it's fourth down a goal. They're going to have to earn it now against the tied defense. You know all 11 of those guys out there. In they may just take a timeout here. Tennessee to get a play and try to score. Yep. Timeout will take one as well. Big fourth down coming up when we come back. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by Allstate. Verizon. Microsoft Office 365. And by Chick-fil-A. A fourth and goal coming up. Jeremy Poot, Nick Shagan. Head coach and defensive coordinator. Remember Friday, we had enough guts to bring up that last play against Clemson. <laughs> and Jeremy said, I'm going to have to live with that forever. But his coaching point was the DB's got to set their heels and not back up. If they're going to run a pick play, do not go back. Cut underneath the pick. We talked about the 10 touchdowns this year in the red zone, but none of them against SEC competition. I'm sure they went over their assignments. They have a running quarterback in the game. Garantano and Kelly in the volunteer backfield. Fourth and goal. Garantano waits, fires, intercepted by Alabama going the other ways. Mac Wilson. Wilson looking for blockers. The Tide's got it back.
were trying to get the ball to John Kelly. He was jammed. Watch, when he goes out, he's jammed at the line of scrimmage. Right there, he can't get out, and that stops the play. Great job by Anthony Jennings. Mac Wilson's third interception of the year for the Tide defense, and they do not let Tennessee score. Nice to have linebackers that cover people like defensive backs, Gary. It was, but it was made easier by the defensive line. I thought it was Anthony Jenkins, but Jennings goes in, and Deron Payne bumps and takes on Kelly and throws the route out. Watch Deron Payne take Kelly on, and there's nobody to go through. It was a one-man route, and that's why it was intercepted. Gives it back to the tied offense. And now they go deeper in the tailback rotation. Brian Robinson, the freshman, with a first down run. Earning future playing time. Exactly. Got their whole second unit offensive line in now. Uh, Wiggins, Shaq Wiggins, shaken up on the play for Tennessee. So we're just over seven minutes remaining in the game. And like I said, in practice, they ran 100 plays. Meaning this second line got at least 50 of them. Let's get an update in New York. Here's Adam. Adam Zucker here in New York, Oklahoma, and Kansas State. Baker Mayfield on the move again. And the Sooners get it to within 21-17 in the third quarter, trying to keep that road winning streak alive. Back to you guys. Baker Mayfield magic again. Pretty good player, huh? That's the type of quarterback that could give this Alabama defense problems. Gunslinger, movement, athletes. Shaq, a senior out of Tyrone, Georgia. Transferred twice in his career. That's right. <laughs> Left side of the screen. He's already playing with a cast on his wrist, so. Yep. Every time he hits somebody, I'm sure it doesn't feel great. Started out his career at Georgia, went to Louisville, and ends up at Tennessee. Second and short. Talk about all under center. And the give. Robinson again and again. <laughs> Coach Saban always says, don't worry about how many snaps you get. When you get plays, just go play and show me something. Exactly. That's easier to say than do, right. but I agree with him. Remember, all of these players that are being recruited by Alabama are, are stars in their high school days. When they come to Alabama, they accept the challenge of competition. And they're actually huddling. <laughs> That's something we haven't seen. This is just a waste of some clock yep. right now. We're down under six and a half. And a first down at the 45. Robinson stays in there. Whoops, high snap. And Tua gets back on top of it, but they lost a good chunk of yardage there, about six. Not sure it was a bad snap or if he took his eye off it. I thought it was high. And he took his eye off it. <laughs> not that bad, right? No, not terrible. But it does bring up second down at 16. So he runs and throws better than he catches. He can't have everything. <laughs> we never said he was a receiver. Exactly. <laughs> and the play clock winds down to seven. Robinson works the left side again this time. Maybe got a yard. That's about it. I guess if your quarterback's going to have a weakness, hands might be it. <laughs> Top 10, Penn State, the game of Michigan tonight. Georgia, as we mentioned, off until next week against Florida. TCU and Kansas tonight. Wisconsin, big winner. Wisconsin uh, sneaking around there at number five. And everybody yeah. talks about, you know, Penn State and Ohio State and Michigan and uh, the Badgers are just sitting they, there. They've got a nice schedule. They I do. will say that, though. You picked them to win the Big Ten I on did. that pregame, our preseason yep. show. I got low all day to throw. And now we'll, well, he will throw. And he threw a strike to Ruggs down the sideline. Ruggs has five catches on the year. They're all touchdowns. God, can he throw the ball? Man, oh man. One freshman to another.
60 yards on the score. Watch it, as Brad told you, he had all day to throw. Tennessee's out of gas, totally out of gas. But watch his delivery, right on the run. And all Henry Ruggs does is score touchdowns. Way to go, Hank. Henry Ruggs the third, 60-yard score. Well, when you can line up far right side and catch a crossing route to the far left side, you've had a lot of time to throw. Extra point is up and good. But even then, with all the time, you got to deliver it. And you put it right on stride. That dude can deliver it. And that guy can find the end zone. Touchdown, Alabama. Going to take you back over the course of the last three or four weeks. You tell me which guy has an 0-3 conference record and which coach has won 21 straight conference games. You guys have a job to do, and I'm respectful of that. I'm trying to get our players to listen to me instead of listening to you guys. And I'm friends with a lot of you guys in the room, and I appreciate it. You know, all that stuff you write about how good we are, it's like poison. But also, there comes a certain time where enough is enough. You know what I mean? It's like taking poison. <laughs> like rat poison. Jeez. <laughs> oh, okay, one guy's got five national championships and he's complaining, and the other guy's fighting for his job and he's complaining to the media. Tough we are to, really bad, the media. We, tough we, to be in the media in the is, SEC, yeah. right? I'm glad we're up here. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You criticize them, they're mad. You praise them, they're mad. <laughs> Got to go to the Goldilocks right there in the middle. <laughs> From the three-yard line, Ty Chandler. Chandler keeps his balance, gets across the 30, out to the 35. Nice return. And we return to New York for another update. All right, Nash, you guys were mentioning a few minutes ago the big one tonight in the Big Ten with Penn State and Michigan. But Michigan State trying to stay perfect in conference play on the year. They finally took a lead against Indiana. It's 10-9 with under three minutes to go. Spartans have the ball. Back to you. Mark D'Antonio uh, yeah. on the staff when Nick was at Michigan State. It's a perfect score for Mark D'Antonio, don't you think, 10-9? Oh, for sure. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> 440 remaining. Tim Jordan. Freshman tail back in there now. Apparently John Kelly's day's done. He's done all he could for the volunteer offense. And now Jordan. Oh, man. He gets leveled by Thompson. Deontay Thompson, a backup safety. Chance to play. Deontay Thompson. Coach, remember me. If somebody goes down. I can I do can, this. I can do this. I know Mika's Mika, but <laughs> I'm not bad. You know, I had some offers too coming out of high school. <laughs> out of four minutes left. Tennessee today, 102 yards of offense. Wow. You talk about Alabama, everybody says, well, you know, they're not as good as maybe the, one of those national championship teams, or maybe they're not as good as last year. You start stacking their numbers up, they're almost exactly where they were. They were, they are. The way they're a little different is they're using more of their weapons. They're using their wide receivers. Now they're throwing the ball to the tight ends, but look how close it is. There it is. Except for that 2011 year. Yeah, that one was pretty good. 184 yards a game. Well, you know, the SEC that year did not have a lot of offense. Remember the 9-6 game? Yeah, that's right. That's the year LSU and Alabama just uh, dominated the conference. A little bit like this year with Georgia and Alabama. Third down at three, empty backfield. Garantano. Whistle before the play. And 3.09 remaining with a timeout. Let's take a look at the GMC Game Changer. Maybe say Changers, the guys in the crimson jerseys on defense. They have made it a tough afternoon for Jared Garantano. They've roughed him up, they've sacked him. And we showed you the dominance of total yardage today, how much they've given up, just a little over 100 yards to the Volunteers. Ball's third and three. Garantano, jump ball, might have been caught, no, it's incomplete. 
Trayvon Diggs. In and, coverage. And in practice on Thursday, the second unit going against the second unit. To attack of Aloha, hit a big pass for a touchdown almost. But Trayvon Diggs came from behind and knocked it out of his hand. Yep. Remember? Yeah. The whole squad went crazy, <laughs> jumping up and down. The whole defense went over there and yep. just swarmed him. Led by Minka Fitzpatrick. Uh, of course. We didn't mention he's one of the cheerleaders at practice as well as everything else he does. Daniel the punt. I think he feels his quarterback, oh. Butch Jones, and his team has taken enough punishment. That's why they're punting fourth and four. DJ Henderson's going to have the penalty. And and Alabama makes mistakes on the punt. <laughs> That's about the only stuff they've done wrong. Exactly. And this one wasn't his fault. He got tagged before he had a chance to catch it. Marks goes, I'm having enough trouble on my own. <laughs> Just leave me alone. Yes. <laughs> Not catch interference on the kicking team. The penalty is 15 yards from the spot of the foul. First down. Well, if you see a big waft of smoke there in the crowd, that's part of the tradition of the third Saturday in October as well. I wish I could go join him, but. Yes. Uh, Stogies, victory Stogies. Some great pictures of Coach Dawlings back here in the press box <laughs> lighting up. And that guy, that one was not in the humidor long enough. He almost burned his face off, that last guy. So now the line of scrimmage is going to be the 35 with 254 left. Just to give you an example of the comparison of Tennessee's offense versus Georgia and Alabama against Alabama, no points, seven first downs, 109 yards. Against Georgia, no points, seven first downs, 142 yards. Oh, wow. Like coach, like mentor, like uh, a two-year coach. Ronnie Clark. There's a picture I was talking about. Jay Barker and Coach Stallings with the victory cigars. <laughs> Too bad they don't uh, have great ventilation on the eye cruiser. I'd have one after the game with you, Gary, just to make your cold better. Yeah. Well, when your girlfriend has one with you, well, that's, you know it's a tradition. Well, you got to marry her. That's right. Absolutely. She likes football and cigars. <laughs> Give her a ring. Approaching two minutes. Ronnie Clark stays in there at tailback, and he'll get the carry. And he gets into the open field, and he wants to play and does well to get a first down. It's going to take four guys turning pro before he plays again. <laughs> I'm just glad Clint Deans has got all these guys on our spotter board. Oh, he was ready. Yeah, he was ready. Everything. He's watched Alabama play before. He has, yeah. Well, last time we did Alabama, they had their fifth string tight end that was playing tailback at times. Well that's it. They're going to take a knee. And the next time we will see them prime time against the LSU. Oh we haven't announced that yet. But well, you just did I guess. Huh? I, I, don't I don't know if I can. Well I, I'm glad that was you. <laughs> well I'll yeah. watch it on TV if we don't do it. <laughs> if we don't do it we'll watch it right. together. Okay. Right. That's good. And one step back and two awaits the very Last second before he takes a knee. Don't forget, coming up when our game's over, which it almost is, stay tuned for the CBS Sports Post Game Show powered by Ram. Zuck, Rick, BJ, all those guys uh, have the post game report for you. They'll update you on those other games still going on, including Oklahoma. They can come back at K State. Well, the balls are going to go to three and four, 0 oh and four in the conference. And Alabama alone on top in the West. At 8 0 and 5 0. I'm sure the stories will start now until at least Monday or Tuesday. Will Tennessee decide that it's time to make a decision with Butch Jones? Or will he decide, let's give him the rest of the year? Well, they knew coming in they were a heavy underdog and their coach was on a hot seat. I think they played as hard as they could. They just don't have what Alabama has a really good football team. The number one football team in the country. 45 to 7 is the final. So that's 22 straight conference wins for the tide. And Nick Saban goes 
to 11 and 0 against Tennessee. And that matches Bear Bryant. Jalen Hurts only had to play about a half. Talking to Condridge Holloway down on the sideline. There's a guy that kind of preceded him in the kind of style that he has as a quarterback. Now let's take a look at the play of the game presented by Napa Auto Parts. Very seldom do we have an opportunity for play of the game brought to you by Napa to have a backup quarterback be our play of the game. But watch this. To a con Roy, on this play and on that cutback goes 23 yards and Tua for the touchdown. Here's the call from Eli. Tua fakes the throw, keeps it, 20, 15, cuts right, 10, forward, 5, dives in, touchdown, Alabama! Eli's calls always are gold, and his team is rolling along to 8-0. No. Number one they are, number one they will stay. All Alabama today, the only score on the board for Tennessee by their defense. And Jalen Hurts over to talk to his opposition quarterback from Tennessee. Tough day for the Tennessee quarterback. Great day for both quarterbacks for Alabama today. Scarborough, Harris, too much of everything. For the Tide, they win it 45 to 7. For Gary Danielson and Allen Force, Brad Nestle saying so long from Tuscaloosa. College football postgame show powered by Ram is up next after these messages. See y'all in Jacksonville next week.